My name is Joshua Soma, and I'm the product manager here at InfoTrack Australia. I can't wait to show you what we have in store for you today and what has InfoTrack done by leveraging Snowflake technologies. If all of you can leave either educated, inspired, or sparking conversations to your team or workplace after today's session, I'll be more than happy. Before I continue on InfoTrack's journey to enhancing customer acquisition retention, who is InfoTrack? What is it? Well, if you ever sold or purchased a house in Australia, you're most likely indirect, indirectly touched InfoTrack. How so? Well, we help those legal professional or banking professionals source information, but not only the property, but company and people. We integrate this back into the workflow and seamlessly improve efficiencies. How do we do it? Well, great question. We are the leading and the award-winning legal technology company in Australia. We are integrated with 30 practice management systems globally and focused on eliminating manual processes and creating efficiencies. This coupled with our first class support and smart searching technology we can allow our 8,000 clients to spend less time on admin and more time serving everyday people across the globe. InfoTrack's not only an Australian company, we have our friends over in the US, UK, and New Zealand. In short, as a group of companies, we build tech for lawyers. So I think everyone, if they could virtual react to this, they would, but building technology can be challenging. Many technical problems can be very giant, UX challenges, um, design and product decisions. All of these can be, building tech is hard. And I just wanna put it out there that now imagine building technology for lawyers. It's no easy feat. And it's hard enough to sell modern technologies in various industries or professions. Now imagine a profession historically bounded by a manual paper heavy processes. Our technology needs to be three things. It needs to be reliable, it needs to be secure, and it definitely needs to be accurate. So as a result of this, customer acquisition and retention has become increasingly more challenging. As trust in our technology and trust in technology in general in any industry takes time. For example, it took a global pandemic for lawyers to more widely adopt a verification of identity service that is online. Our digital verification of an identity service, WebVOI, has grown about 250% since the pandemic lockdown in Australia. What were lawyers doing that prior? Well, they were actually conducting this process by hand in the, in the firm photocopying a driver's license or a passport as soon as the client comes in the door. I think this really articulates how difficult customer acquisition can be for our industry. Now apply this to a competitive market where differentiation from competitors is a must to gain a competitive advantage. You are now tasked to innovate how you retain customer attention and grow customer acquisition. And what do you really favor first? Well, it depends on who you ask. That can differ really favorably. However, most companies focus their efforts on customer acquisition instead of customer retention. And in short, growing your customer base is the fastest way to grow your business and reach short-term revenue goals. Although it might not be the most lucrative and cost-effective. In fact, Frederick. Richard Land of Bain and Company mentioned that increasing customer retention by just 5% can lead to increasing profits of 25% to 95%. Retain customers result in increased uses of services, less maintenance, better financial planning, and increased customer acquisition through case studies or word of mouth. Look where we are now at the SoSpeak Summit, where a great example of customer improving customer acquisition by providing case studies of the service. Despite this, customer acquisition will still be the driver for the business 
And over the past decade, the overall marketing has shifted from outbound marketing or selling to inbound selling, the form of content creation in inbound market. You can see that as 44% of companies that admit they have a greater focus on acquisition while 18% focus on retention. What has changed? Well, it's just a form in which we, uh, which people conduct customer acquisition. HubSource states that they track that inbound marketing or inbound customer acquisition attributes or attracts 62% less cost per lead than outbound marketing dominated organizations. As a result, marketing or business qualified leads cost less than a single within outbound marketing procedures such as broadcasting a radio or television ad. Consequently, we live in a market today where now more than ever, all the content is more meaningful and personalized towards your customer, to your needs and your desires. And now content cannot be in a form of a blog at times. Content needs to be more than that. And we need to think of radical or innovative solutions in that space to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Well, these are all problems and situations that have the market faced day to day. So what has InfoTracker's challenges been in enhancing its customer acquisition and retention strategies? Well, we needed to rethink our acquisition and retention strategy. In short, our acquisition had limited capacity to utilize inbound marketing collateral to qualified leads. And our market awareness is limited to our primary audience, our conveyancing and legal market. Smaller percentage of wider audiences know of our deep food offering. We recognize that was content was not giving us an advantage. We needed, like I said prior, something, some marketing collateral that could not be replicated by our competitors. In the retention space, we we had we could we saw that our competition had seen a growing competition has seen a growing client churn rate in our company. It was growing, and we we'll, we were a bit we we're interested in how we could solve that problem. And limited by our current offering, challenges were faced when attempting to keep clients loyal and engaged. How can we create something that doesn't let them move to another company and and change, change provider of these our services. So we decided to act on this problem really quickly. We joined our data team, our development team, our marketing, and our product team together to ideate a solution. But first, before we did that, we needed to conduct research. So we decided to conduct primary research in the form of discussions and interviews with our, our market, potential leads, and also our clients. And secondary research was conducted in the form of analyzing our data in the form of orders, the documents, uh, the data inside our documents, and et cetera, in the conveyancing market. So let's touch on the, the primary. So in the primary research, we decided to focus on asking questions around what you needed inside your firm as a client and also understand what does the legal and conveyancing market rely or have an understanding of us? And what was that preconceived perception about InfoTrack services? What made us different from other competitors out there? Really, really fun activity. And we, we came through this primary research in this discovery session, we came to four dot points. And our findings were that conveyances had a limited visibility on their market performance. How did they go against to the conveyance of the law firm down the road? Conveyances had a limited BI solution to analyze their firm's performance. How could they grow as a firm? Conveyances needed price justification and 
market was unaware of the additional data, services, and insights InfoTrack offered. They needed a ju uh, justification to use us, and they seen that they couldn't find one. Secondary research. Well, we focused on our existing data sets and specifically our core market being um, conveyancing in Australia. And we narrowed down to New South Wales. For those people who do not know what conveyancing is, conveyancing is the buying and selling of, of um, a house. In most states of Australia, there is a contract of sale. This determines the negotiation. This is a contract to determine a vendor and a purchaser buying a specific property or set of land. In this contract of sale, there's a set of requirements and set of certain documents you need to order to fulfill the government's need to buy or sell a house. These include title searches, uh, things like the 10.7 10 and 603 certificates, council certificates, swimming pool diagrams. There is a whole bunch of certificates and um, documents you require in this. In each of these documents, there's a lot of data, a lot of data about the house, a lot of data about the, the condition of the house, what location it is, who are the people involved, etc. We decided to look at also the ordering of these documents. At what time you order it determine in the flow of a conveyance can determine specific time events about a specific property. So we decided to get all that data, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, place it into some of our uh, data bases such as Snowflake and et cetera, and started to query on that data and make some analysis or and uncover some metadata trends. Consequently, we, after these two sets of research, we came to a conclusion. And that conclusion was quite outstanding and we hit a gold mine. We found that these documents and property specific data in this case, that we could determine at a suburb granularity across New South Wales, that top real estate agents in New South Wales, days on market, local versus non-local sales, amount of first home buys, client versus market performance. This data set is unique. It does not, it, it holds data. We hold data that domain and other um, corporations might not hold. And it really sets us apart from them because we also have private selling of properties in Australia. But the really interesting part about this uh, project was that we uncut through our getting the, um, the metadata from our SQL databases and the response data from our Mongo, we formulated two ideas to solve customer acquisition and customer retention. With the help of our marketing product team, we defined two solutions with this data that would benefit our problems we talked about prior. And those were a client insights dashboard and a days on market first home buyers report. I'll touch on what they are very shortly. These two solutions were aimed to, to help solve those problems and progress us in a new way, an innovative way of conducting customer acquisition or retention. But for those people in the room that want to are uh, interested on the technical side, how do we do this? So, boy, do I, am I excited to show you what's next. So, how do we do it? Well, we reverted back to our famous InfoTrack data products pyramid. We love it at our company. We refer back to it as a point of reference, not only for the technical team as a high level architecture diagram, but also a diagram where we could present to business stakeholders to convey what we are delivering. And this data pyramid outlines our data structure. So some terminology there you are aware. What was, so we decided to map our structure, our high level um, diagram, architecture diagram to this pyramid. And what we came up with was, on the next slide, I'll show you what our data lake is, but it mainly consists of S3 buckets. We have Snowflake as our data warehouse. We used at the API layer, Snowflake's node and .NET core drivers. And at the top in React, we created insights, an insights dashboard and a conveyancing report. 
this diagram helps us not only in these products, but any other products we develop, data-driven solution, I, sh I should say, in InfoTrack. So let's get, deep, di get deeper inside the data lake. So I know most people in the room will know what a data lake is, but it's a centralized repository of uh, structured or unstructured data. And what, why would you have a data lake? Well, InfoTrack, in this case, used our data lake to create or create this service. But why do we create it in the first place? Well, we had some real bad, or not bad, I should say, but real challenging circumstances around how can we create a single source of truth? How can we get our data from a variety of data sources into one spot? How can we connect data sources together and visualize them or report on them? Here is why we created our data lake. So what does our data lake look like and how does it relate to the client insights and the conveyancing reports that we created? Well, InfoTrack sits on pretty much three data sources. Your structured data in the form of relationship databases, SQL, et cetera, our orders database, um, and et cetera. This data is processing at extremely high capacity and it is streamed using Amazon MSK into our S3 buckets. It's in a raw data format. Now, we also have a semi-structured data, CSV, JSON, and XML. This is more for understanding and it is used less um, in, in need of real-time operation or near real-time use. It can be done in batch, hence why we use AWS AWS Lambda in Python and process that in our raw data. And then we also have unstructured data in terms of documents and PDFs. We put that into our data lake as well to also conduct analysis. But in this case, we use Databricks um, to conduct our friends over there and uh, use an ETL process using Databricks. And then we process the property or we process that data and created our property data ripe, ready to go inside our great favorite data mart. So what is a data mart? You may ask, um, or in this case, a, a data warehouse is, it's a subject oriented data database. It's partition segment of a data warehouse. This is where we put our data in. Now, in this case, who is the architecture behind, or who is the infrastructure behind this data mart? Well, our biggest data mart provider, Snowflake. Snowflake enabled us to develop this solution in incredible speeds, both solutions, get to market in less than three months. How did it do it? Well, we, like I mentioned S3, we used Snowflake's product called Snowpipe. Snowpipe allowed us to continuously ingest and transform data. It is necessary, necessary for our company. And we realized in this use case, especially the client's insights dashboard, clients would want to make informed decision with real time data. Freshness is critical to decision making. And once that data from Snowpipe, and once the data is using Postpipe and pumped into Snowflake, all that data is transformed into our data map views, which is used for which is later going to be used for REST API interaction. So I talked about our architecture here, but why did we choose Snowflake here? What made us go over um, other solutions in this space? Well, it comes down to three, three or more things. One, Snowflake has a, an amazing ability to have to order scale and to essentially horizontally and vertically order scale to provide more resources and virtually do this without the need of maintenance. This allowed us to deal with more concurrent connections to our client's insights dashboard and process these queries a lot quicker and in a lot more efficient manner for our clients. So our clients do not experience any lags or performance issues. Secondary, 
we create we use the search optimization service. We actually had a problem in our team where we we couldn't get the query times for our views uh, small. And using the search optimization service, uh, InfoTrack could use uh, the, the query times onto these views were drastically reduced, resulting in better speed for our clients. In addition, there was no maintenance. We didn't need to worry about the snow um, creating a, a, our own infrastructure instead of using Snowpipe. We would have had to use Kafka. We would have had to develop a solution in that space that could do some a similar um, expectations as Snowpipe. And in all fairness, Snowpipe is an enterprise-grade technology. And we didn't have to worry about maintaining our data warehousing, indexing, and et cetera we were focused on creating data products and data services and developers didn't need to worry about that and focus on strategy and bringing value to our clients rather than getting stuck into the Monday, the Monday process. In addition, we used RDS in the past. RDS was very useful at the time, but at, when we got more mature, we realized that our instances were costing way too much for its inactivity at times. Hence, we moved to Snowflake for its pay-as-you-go model. Additionally, we also use Snowflake to query JSON at times. And the JSON functionality out of the box in Snowflake is far superior than those out in the market. Awesome. So I touched on the data warehouse and the data mart layer. How about the API layer? Well. Snowflake has an incredible SDK in the form in the, its node and .NET drivers. We use this in an application. We deployed a, a docking container in the Kubernetes environment, a pod, and we spun up two instances to host these services. In these services, we created a .NET application and a node application. The .NET and node drivers were super simplistic. Essentially, we start with a connection with Snowflake, make sure we executed the correct statements, consume the results, and made sure we terminated that connection. Our support team and the account management team for Snowflake really helped us during this process to ensure that we consumed Snowflake in its best performant manner. So the API layer is created, the data warehouse and the data uh, marts were formalized and um, loaded. The data, uh, data lake was pumped in and extracted into and etc. We now have a almost completed pyramid. Now, what did we create? And what what is a client insights dashboard and what is a property conveyancing report? Well, I'm excited to show you that. So the final products, we created were revolutionary in its state. No other company in this industry used products like these to retain clients and also find leads or generate leads in a new manner or format. So let's touch on that customer acquisition side. Well, we had the first home buyers and days on market reports. These reports were on our marketing website. Our leads could find this and we promoted it on social and clients would sign up, put their first name, last name, et cetera, and get an enter a postcode, which was really important and get this report sent to them via email. It showcased what made InfoTrack the leading marketing and uh, the leading legal tech company in Australia. Cause we showed them data like this. So, Average first home buyers in your area, we compare that against your average neighborhood. We even mapped average days on market per suburb. Let's take this example. Dali Chill, 53 days to sell property. Incapacent Arncliffe, 87 days for those New South Wales people on the call. That means that in Marrickville, it is a lot harder to purchase a property and you have to offer more than in that of Arncliffe. It also tells our conveyancing clients, you might, might want to operate more in Macville because you get more 
business and it takes less time to do a conveyance. And then we compared it against the state and the market compares. As a result, this service alone attributed to 80% of, of its downloads resulted in market qualified leads. In turn resulted in more sales opportunity. And some of these clients now have been onboarded from that experience that they received those reports to now becoming high or high spending clients. In addition, we increased our market awareness with more inquiries around our data solutions. And in result, we got interest in some of our data products such, um, such as our API solutions. Now on the customer acquisition, sorry, customer retention front, we created my personal favorite, the My Activity Insights Dashboard. Conveyances can come here and see their whole forms, a firm's performance in one page across New South Wales, Queensland and Vic. You can see information like the days of market, your last 12 months activity upon a Google Maps. You can also see how you're competing against the market. I, in December, you did better than the market, but in February, you didn't compete as well against the market trends. How can a law firm's partner help its client or help its team grow and understand this and improve for the next third? Top realtors as well. Inside our, our proprietary tech, um, searches and documents, we can uncover information like who is the top realtors and present this back to our conveyances to grow their law firm. Go have a coffee, ABC law firms, book Sydney Cove Property. Do keep in mind, this is demo data only. What did this result in? 10% of InfoTrack's conveyancing clients have viewed and used this report. We have received those clients have, have we proven that they've less likely left us because of that. And strong positive feedback from clients when demonstrated the service defined by most as a great value add and a lead generation tool to their business. InfoTrack is not not just a searching provider or a legal tech company, we are here to grow your business. All thanks to the power of Snowflake and giving this the ability to create a, a product like these in a, such a short period of time and in incredible speeds to our clients receive no troubles in accessing these reports. So as part of the innovation team, we'd love doing a future, we love doing the activity of asking what if. So what if we could do more with these things? So what if we got some of that data sets and offered on the data, the Snowflake's data marketplace? We sit on such a unique data set. Some people could be interested in that, such as the days on market and et cetera. In addition, you'd, as, as Snowflake's, we could use uh, Snowflake's data sharing capabilities inside our firm or other sister companies of InfoTrack or other geos. Finally, we could also uncover new derived property sets to offer our clients in other searches that we offer in InfoTrack. And, or one of the biggest feedbacks was convert the insights dashboards into insights reports to send to firms partners periodically so they can receive a monthly report inside their email box. So many what ifs and so many possibilities with these tools. The big part about this conversation and this talk today is Content creation and enhancing customer acquisition and retention is taken sometimes too literally. It's about understanding more than your blog post or your um, news article, et cetera. How can you change that mindset and create solutions uh, and marketing collateral that sets yourself away from other companies? What data do you derive from your services and products? Spend some time really looking at the services and products you use on a day-to-day -day or you sell to your consumers and see what you can derive from that and how you could use that they call garbage data collection and re you recycle that data to create essentially new products or services to better value your clients. I hope that either inspired, educated, or sparked a conversation in your firm. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.